So we're going to write a new method to compare two floating point numbers. So we'll make this public. We'll make it static so we can run it all on its own. It will return a Boolean. True means they're equal. False means they're not equal. And we'll call the method doubles are equal. And it will take two parameters, both of type double, num1 and num2. So this will be a little code snippet that you can use throughout this unit, throughout this year, when you need to compare floating point numbers, like doubles. Um, and here's why we have to do something, something special. If we use the equality operator, again, that's the double equal sign, for doubles, it will only return true if all binary digits match. For equal numbers, equal in quotes, meaning essentially equal, for equal numbers, this is probably not the case due to floating point rounding and therefore not what we want. In general, we never want to use the equality or, or inequality operator when dealing with doubles. So what do we do? We will check if they are close enough. And what do we mean by close enough? Well, technically, we mean like what within that epsilon value of each other. When we used CodePad in the last unit, and we did that, I think we took a floating point number, or we took a double, we multiplied it by 100. It wasn't what we expected it to be. But it was really, really close. It was off by like point zero 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 three or something. So the way we want to, so let's define this epsilon value. So we'll just make a constant. So we'll make it final, double, all capitals to show that it's a constant, epsilon. Let's do 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay, so that's really small. And the question we want to ask are, are these two doubles within this epsilon of each other? And the way we can phrase that question is we can take the difference of the two numbers. And if the difference is less than the epsilon value, we're going to call them equal. Now, we don't know if num1 is greater than num2 or if num2 is greater than num1. And we'd we don't really care. So we could take the absolute value of the difference and compare that with the epsilon. So let's, let's do that. So we'll use the ABS method of the math class. So that returns the absolute value of whatever parameter is passed. So we'll pass the difference between num1 and num2. So if the absolute value of the difference is less than epsilon, we will return true. Otherwise, we will return false. And now we have a nice little code snippet that properly compares to doubles and accounts for the fact that there may be some sort of floating point rounding errors going on. One, one thing I want to point out is that you know, this is a more sophisticated conditional expression. Math, absolute value of the difference, less than epsilon. But being a conditional expression, by definition, it must evaluate to either true or false. So this expression here, which I'll copy, if it evaluates to true, we return true. And if it evaluates to false, we return false. So we don't actually need all of this code. So just, I mean, I want it there because we're learning if else statements. But for your own, just 
so you realize that we don't have to use an if statement here. We could simply return that conditional expression. And you'll, that's actually a much more common approach you'll, you'll see. So if you find yourself writing an if else where you're returning true or false or assigning true or false based on the conditional value, you can just use the conditional value directly and it saves you, just makes the code a little bit more concise and perhaps easier to read. So. Cool. Now we have a method that will properly compare two floating point values.